we're experiencing in the country is the growing cost of higher education. Uh, for families these days, uh, tuition is going up, and that includes the public universities. Uh, what would be your proposals for making higher education uh, more accessible to middle and lower income people in the Commonwealth? And Ms. Buscola, would you like to start on that? Um, I came from a family, like I said, I was the first one to go to college, and that didn't come easily. My parents put money aside. Uh, we did without a lot in order for me to get there. My father, who was a steel worker, uh, before that had uh, straight A's in high school, and he was accepted to Lehigh University but couldn't go because back then there were no grants and loans available for students to get there. I think if a student has A's and B's and C's and they're, they're really doing well in school that there should be no impediment to going to college. So we have to make college more affordable. That means we need to hold our universities accountable as well for how they're spending their dollars. Every time I hear that tuition rates are increasing, I want to look at what are you doing about teacher tenure? What's going on in our classrooms with the classes that are available to our students? And um, what are you doing when, we're, when he's talking about bringing down the cost of government across the board? Universities, school districts, local government, state governments have to figure out a way to cut spending. And that's going to be part of the reason why when they cut spending, then your college tuition um, will go down. Okay, Mr. Connolly. Thank you. Uh, one, of, one of the big issues um, with universities and things like that is, is you never really get to see their books. And I've done some research into this. They, they always claim that the cost is going up is going up. But where is the money going? They have endowments and they have other funds that, that they don't disclose. I would really like to see how a lot of these places are run because they, if everyone's prices go up, people accept it as facts and they just, and that's what they have to do, they get student loans. Uh, no one examines how much they spend on their athletic programs, but they say, oh, we need to have the big athletic program, we need to pay the coach four million dollars because when that football team wins, then we have more students willing to pay the tuition. I don't think that's really the goal of universities. I mean, it's important, but it's not really the goal. Uh, also, community colleges are a tremendous value, and here in Lehigh Valley, we've got some of the best community colleges in the state, if not the nation. Um, it, it's, it's just one of those things where if, if they let you look at their books, and, they, and the private colleges will never let you look at their books, and they won't do it for a reason. They don't want you to know where they're putting their money. They just keep saying the prices go up. Books are another huge thing. We need to go up to electronic books because that's a huge cost for students. Thank you. What else is home? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the, uh, I have a question from the audience written in very big letters on the 3 by 5 cards quest, uh, here, which says, how are we going to pay for teacher, police, and public worker pensions? And Mr. Connolly, would you like to start with that question? That is one of the most important things we have to worry about. In 2012, we are looking at a $4 billion balloon payment. Now, I had the good fortune of last week to sit down with Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey. He was at a Charlie Dent fundraiser, and I got to pull him aside and we chatted about this very thing. And he, he said everything correctly, but he said, well, you know, you got to change your investment period. Well, unfortunately, some, some non-business person in the government uh, negotiated a five-year investment period to begin getting a pension. Then they went from 2% to 2.5%, which is a 25% increase. Uh, we are we are staring down the down the barrel of, of a debt gun that is going to kill us. Um, the the unions are not going to voluntarily give this up. The Supreme Court in Pennsylvania has three times uh, told us that no, nope, you, you got to pay those you got to pay those pensions. I'm wondering if the unions, if they're not willing to uh, to adjust what they're going to receive in pensions, are going to put themselves out of business. The answer is we do have a spending problem. Unfortunately, we're, we're contractually obligated to these unions. It's really going to be in their court if they want to kill themselves like Bethlehem Steel folks did when it came to um, when it came to maintaining their pensions, ultimately having things go broke and losing everything. Thank you, uh, Ms. Buscola. Um, you know, I talked about personal responsibility. When that vote was made, I think it was close to eight, ten years from ago. When the legislature increased their pension multiplier from two to three percent, and then two percent for state employees to two point five, I voted no and refused to take it. I'm at two percent. Probably only one or two people in Harrisburg at two percent. Actually, my staff always kid them. I'm like, they get they, their multiplier is higher than mine. <laughs> we, we tease them a lot about that. But given that, because. We just recently voted in Harrisburg to do a couple of things with new hires. Now they will no longer be able to get their 2.5%. They're going to be at 2% unless they buy in at a higher contribution rate. 
You can't vest anymore at five years. We went to 10 years. We, our super annualization is 92. It's a combination of years of service and age, where before it was just 35 years of age. And no more lump sums. There's a lot of times you can take a lump sum payout and take your contribution out, and we've eliminated that. Is that all we need to do? Exactly no. It is, it is. Is it a good first step and we're getting there? Absolutely. And I'm actually proud of that vote because we are making changes that matter to people. Following up on that, should we be moving uh, public employees sort of in the direction of the private sector, uh, the greater reliance on defined contribution plans rather than defined benefit plans, which is now the predominant uh, retirement mechanism in the private sector? Uh, Ms. Boscola, would you like to?